Hey guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to the Heirloom Seed Expo with Roots and Refuge Farm. Uh, I'm in Santa Rosa, California. Uh, it's my second time at the National Heirloom Expo. Uh, I think it's the ninth annual expo. They've been here for nine years. So excited to be here. Um, today is actually the last day and we are about to geek out really hard <gasps> on all of this stuff. So. I know last year I was nervous and I did not thoroughly cover this room. I showed some stuff, but I was like, I don't know, I don't want to bore everybody. But you guys have been loud and clear about the fact that you want to see this room thoroughly. So get a cup of coffee. We're going to be here for a little while. I actually got up here pretty early to be able to um, see everything before it got really loud in here because I really want to share this with you. And I guess we're just going to jump into it. Of course behind me here we've got the massive squash tower which is really, really cool. Um, a lot of this stuff gets donated after this is over and people get to take it home and stuff like that. Um, but this event goes to fundraise for school gardens and that sort of thing in the area. <laughs> nice squash tower, huh, man? This is fantastic. <laughs> How are you? Good. So we're just gonna start here um, at the peppers and we're gonna go into what I know about some of these varieties. I'm actually making a list on my phone, kind of keeping in mind what I'd like to grow next year. And I wanna give you guys the opportunity to see this stuff in hand and what it actually looks like not on the page of a catalog this is like a an actual like living hands-on catalog so cool so we've got all of these peppers over here and i believe they've got the winners obviously these are in different stages of ripeness uh, probably y'all are mostly familiar with the tam jalapeno here's the red mini bill i actually kind of talked crap about this pepper in my garden tour the other day sorry guy the Nata Pino, uh, this was a good one this year. Oh goodness, I'm gonna mispronounce so many things today. The Long Roos Verde, I don't know, looks kind of like a bell. I'm not familiar with that one. The Sugar Rush Red, now it was the Sugar Rush Peach that I ate on camera and cried. Lemon Spice Jalapeno, these have been doing okay in my garden. None of my peppers did great, but these did good. Um, and look how pretty those are and the Pimento de Pardon. Now, some of these tables have repeats, so I'll just kind of skip over those. Cayenne, this is a pretty popular one, many of you are probably familiar with. Again, the Sugar Rush. Oy, not even gonna try it. That's neat. Oh, here's a Golden Cayenne, that's really pretty. Wonder if you could make, I mean, I guess you could dry this and make a powder that is um, just a different color than what we're used to. That'd be kind of neat. Puya. I like this, kind of like a little sheep's nose type pimento pepper. Now this is interesting. I'm curious about uh, if this just ripens in these stages, that's kind of neat. You could have multiple different colors of peppers off of one plant. This is actually on my list to grow next year. The New Mex Joe Parker. This gets really good reviews. Not familiar with this. The Gulet. It's a lot of really small peppers, as well as this Iranian cherry. That would probably be good pickled. This is a little bitty guy. Chilaca Negro. Oh, the Lightning Mix. So this is kind of like a habanero heat and it comes in different colors, different shades, uh, very similar to habanero and heat. That's an interesting one. And the Chinese five color, this is a really dwarf little plant. It's very, very ornamental and I've grown this in containers multiple times. It's just so pretty and all of these grow kind of upright. Very beautiful pepper. Boy, pain pointed. I don't know if I like the sound of that. Xavery <laughs> habanero. Craig's Grande, this is kind of like one of my 
go-to jalapenos. I've grown this every year for years now. Um, that's a really good jalapeno. There's the Trinidad Scorpion. I don't grow super hot, so this definitely qualifies as one. They sure are pretty, though. And there's the Orange Spice Jalapeno. I started all of these, and I don't think they all made it into my garden. I think I sold too many of them. But I definitely want to grow all of the different varieties of uh, jalapenos for all the different colors next year. Golden Marconi. This one is a very, very good pepper. Now, the Marconi comes in red and purple and golden. And I think the red has been my favorite so far. But the golden was really good, too. Mine all looked, like, really dark like this. Maybe I just let them get really ripe. They have a very sweet, good pepper flavor. Hascaria. This was super prolific for me this year as far as peppers went. I didn't have great luck with peppers, but these were some of the most productive and they produced first. Oh, look at this. Thunder Mountain Longhorn. Oh, wow. Look, there's a twin pepper. That's interesting. Thai Giant. Oh, the Aji Pineapple. This is growing in my garden right now. It's hot. And then the Bikinho. This, um, someone actually posted about this recently, I think in our Facebook group, where they had these pickled at a restaurant, and they said they were really good. They were really fruity and also kind of hot. So I think, wait, I mean, and look at this branch. It's covered. Obviously a prolific plant. The Buena Mulata sure is pretty, isn't it? That deep purple and red. Not sure what's going on here, but it's a pretty pepper. Oh, here's the pumpkin spice. So kind of a darker, darker orange than the orange spice. Some of these are repeats from other tables. Machete. The Criolla de Cochina. I grew this this year. Mine weren't this big, but my plant was also really puny. Um, I'd like to try this one again. This is supposed to be kind of similar to the Aros con Pollo in that it is a, um, a seasoning pepper, so it's going to have a real savory flavor uh, and be just really interesting. Oh, look at that bad boy. This would put the hurt on you real bad. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> this looks scary just to look at. <laughs> and here's the Pequino Red. Um, like we just looked at over, we saw the orange one. So oh, many peppers. I'm trying to make sure I don't skip anything. Oh, look at the Brazilian starfish. Isn't this so pretty? It's such a beautiful pepper. The lilac bell. I've grown this one for a few years. Sweet tender tinker bell. Names like that just make me want to grow things. Moscow. Um, the glit. We saw that one already. With its tail. That's kind of cool looking. I wonder what the flavor is like. This reminds me a lot of the um, Corbacci or Jimmy Nardello's. Not quite as curly on the end. But that looks like a really neat pepper. Oh, hey, check it out. There's my old friend, Aros Confoyo. Looking good, buddy. Ooh, this is pretty. X. Okay. Look at that. Now that is a really interesting fruit. Scotch bonnet. Here's the lemon drop. Now I got the seeds for this one um, from Hudson Valley the other day. So I'll be growing that next year. He said it's really tropical, very fruity. Sweet clay. This is pretty. The Ethiopian brown berber. That's really a beautiful, beautiful pepper. I love brown peppers. King of the North, really nice looking bell. Korean dark green. Y'all, I'm just touching all of this stuff. <laughs> I just can't help it. <laughs> Serranos, this is my favorite salsa pepper. They're pretty spicy little guys, but they grow really well. Um, and I actually prefer them over the jalapeno for heat. Uh, they're just really good in salsa. This is pretty. The till. I had started this this year. California Wonder. There's the Sugar Rush Peach. <laughs> That's funny. Very clever Baker Creek. <laughs> Here's a good pimento. I love a good pimento pepper. 
And these shishitos, now these look like they've been picked for a little while. They're kind of starting to shrivel, but shishitos are so good. Just blistered in a pan, make a little sauce to go with it. Oh, I love good shito, shishito peppers. Now this one's kind of neat. Bananas, pepper, purple UFO. Um, I grew this one in one of my little grow pots this year. Um, I'm kind of getting over like little bitty mini things. I'm kind of really wanting to go towards more meaty peppers uh, because the little ones are just so hard to do much anything with. But that's so cute. Look at the Brazilian starfish. Well, that's different. Here's the banana again in another place, and this looks very different. So I don't know if those were just picked a lot younger. That's kind of neat. Oh, look at this guy, the green squash. It's kind of cool. I have seeds for this, but I've not grown it. Ajvarsky. It looks really neat. I might need to put that one on my list. Now let's go over here and I, I, they've got some more peppers over here. I want to look at this and then we'll start them on the tomato. Okay, so over here it looks like we have some different peppers that are maybe by a special grower. Chili culture. I'm not familiar with this, but I'm definitely going to look into them. Look at this brown jalapeno. That is really, really neat. This guy looks like he'd definitely kick your butt. I'm never going to eat this in my entire life. I can confidently say that. Uh, the smoky rainbow naga. Hmm. Oh, look how pretty this is. Another one I will never eat, but at least I can admire its beauty. Okay, so these are grown by Larry Wagner here. Some different tomatoes. And we're going to look through these. Some of these are completely new to me. Like, I've never before seen some of these. Some are familiar, like the yellow brandywine, white thomasole, I've grown this. The Wagner blue-green, now I've seen these seeds before and I wasn't familiar with uh, Wagner, but now I know. This is new, Virginia Sweets, I've not seen this. Now that is a really pretty tomato. Just gorgeous, streaky. I think that the inside of this tomato is just absolutely stunning. The Thessaloniki, I actually grew this this year. Um, to be completely honest, I had some really funky looking tomatoes. I didn't know they were supposed to look like that, so I feel better now. Um, the tangerine, look at that. That is really, really pretty. Trucker's favorite. Some of these I've, I've heard the names of before, but I've not grown them. Striped German. Look at the color on that. That's amazing. Oh wow. So this is called Shaw, S H A H. But look at this. That's funny. <laughs> he had a hard time. Uh, Rebecca Allen. I'm just going to grab some of the ones that are really neat looking to me. There's the Red Beauty. Look at that striping. This little guy must have been in the sun. That is really dark with anthocyanins. Nature's Riddle. Now this was one that I started this year and I don't think I ended up growing it. That is really, really pretty. Look at that. So pretty. And here, Mary Robinson's German Bicolor. That's huge. And super, super mottled, stripy flesh. I bet that's gorgeous inside. Ah, lover's lunch. Yes, please. Hey, there's the Italian heirloom. I grew that this year and got some massive tomatoes off of it. I had several 22 ounce tomatoes from that plant. The gold medal. I didn't have great luck with this one. They were just all really irregular and strange. And even here it looks, I don't know. I, I didn't have any tomatoes that came off of mine that looked that good. The Creole did really well for me this year. Um, they were all fairly uniform and good flavor and pretty uh, consistent. Oh, I've been growing for about 15 years um, these heirlooms and I grow about 70 each year and I like to add new ones each year so I'll, I'll eliminate my 10 lowest producers and find 10 new ones that I want to try and they're all open pollinated so I save the seeds and they're all organically grown and I sell to a few restaurants and I just enjoy growing tomatoes and um, eating tomatoes and working in the in the soil and I grow a lot of wild boar farms uh, tomatoes and those are brads and 
I'm having good success. I think mainly because I do not overwater my tomatoes. I, I go real, real easy on the water, and some of these are dry farmed. So I have about 25% of what you see are got no water at all. Wow. Yeah. That is really interesting. I tell people that you get so much better flavor yes, whenever you're not right. just drowning them right, all the time. Right. So yeah, that's very validating to hear. Yeah. <laughs> that's really interesting. Dry farming, I haven't heard of that, like to do it with the no water. You know, you, you have to be in an area where you know the soil is conducive to it and the weather is conducive. Right. And then you sort of have to take a chance if you've been growing and watering and your, your inclination is to think, geez, if they don't get water, they're not going to grow. And so I always say to people, we'll try a few, you know, yeah. and see how, how they do. But I water them in first. When I right. plant them, I'll water just once at, wow. at the planting time and then no more. I've got, wow, a, awesome. I got a couple of the dry farm tomatoes on this other table and you'll see they're just as beautiful. Yeah, as well, that is really is. fascinating. Well, thank you so much for sharing your work with us here. Well, you're welcome, Jessica. It's absolutely beautiful. Tomatoes. This, the, I'm, the most popular question I get, you can probably predict what it is. What's your What's favorite, favorite tomato? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm really not one to um, have favorites. One, only one. And I pretty much like all of them that I grow for taste. But uh, this is one of my favorites for sure. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. And what was this called? Early Yellow Stripe. Early Yellow Stripe. And he was saying that he wasn't sure where he originally got it from, but that it's one of his favorites. So let's give it a try. Wow. You like that? A little bit of an explosion in the mouth. That's amazing. Now, I live in Arkansas. Okay. My tomatoes gave out about a month ago. And I don't eat them outside uh -huh. of season. Like if they're not fresh grown, yeah, I don't got like you. I don't buy store tomatoes. Got you. I say they taste like disappointment, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, anybody's ever named a tomato disappointment. <laughs> so, that is amazing. Thank you so much. My little a little You're bonus welcome. tomato. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, that was really interesting to get to speak to Mr. Wagner, and he actually was sharing some different seed seed exchange information with me on being able to get your hands on some rare seeds through the Seed Savers Exchange. So I'm going to look into that, and when I have more information on it, I will share it with you guys. First, we're going to come over here and look at the rest of the tomatoes because there are a few tables here that are just like calling my name. All right, so let's start taking a look at these tomatoes. Here the chestnut chocolate which is this kind of like medium globe what is this that's a paste I don't see the sign of what this paste is I'm not sure what's going on there brandywine the Jersey Giant this one's a really cool one I would really like to grow this I meant to this year this is gonna be on my list that I'm writing down this is another one that I'm gonna grow next year I actually got seeds for this last year someone sent me and I didn't get them started in time but it's just a really fascinating tomato this is also called the traveler's tomato uh, this is what it's actually um, but basically it was called the traveler's tomato because um, it was said that people would carry it in their pocket and they would just tear off little bits of it to eat as they traveled. So that's kind of interesting. Tullaluca pink and red rosso. And over here the millionaire. That's the that's this big one. Definitely like the look of that. This is a new one to me that I've not heard of. Brave General. But look at this. Definitely like big rounded uh, globe tomatoes. I really like the look of this. That one I'm going to write down. Here's the Gazante. I actually grew this one and I didn't really like it, so sorry guy. Evan's Purple Pear. It's kind of neat looking. Goldman's Italian. Look at this. I bet that is a really pasty, meaty tomato. Kind of interested in that one. Purple Ball. I've also called this Eva's Purple Ball before, or Ava's Purple Ball. Um, really, really uniform. Like, look at all of these. They're super rounded. I bet these would be really, really easy to do the whole core and score method to put them in the freezer and then uh, process later just because of being so smooth like that. 
That would just be super simple to process. I really like the way those look. Uh, Cor de Beau. Oh, one lonely little ox heart here. It's looking pretty good though. The Borgo Solano. Solano. This is kind of neat. It's got a little tail on it. I've not seen this tomato before. Here's the mushroom basket. This one was interesting to see last year. Really super fluted. I actually love the look of tomatoes like this, but I don't grow a ton of them because they're just a little bit harder to process and use, but aren't they beautiful? Here's Granny Cantrell. I've seen this before. And okay, now this is one that I'm writing down. This is called Bread and Salt. Really big ox heart. These things are heavy, which tells me that they're super meaty. And look at this. I mean, just like some really massive ox heart tomatoes. I think these would be very similar to that Italian heirloom I grew this year and really liked. Oh, the orange table. Here's the orange peach. That's similar to that Wapsipinican peach I grew. It's got a really kind of fuzzy skin. Amana orange. Orange icicle. So here's this that I'm not going to pronounce. Um, these are really interesting. Big. These are more bright, whereas like some of the others are, are more like dark orange. This has got a lot of yellow and a lot of striping to it. So that's kind of an interesting tomato. Orange Jazz. I've not grown this or Dad's Sunset. Now Dad's Sunset is interesting to me because of its roundness and its smoothness. Again, I just feel like this would be a really easy tomato to process because you could very simply just core it and score the bottom and get the skin off really easy. And I mean, that's a pretty sizely tomato. That's over a pound right there. Here's the yellow brandy wine. Accordion. Oh, here's Thornburn's terracotta. Now I grew this this year. This poor tablecloth is hard. But I, this is the last day. Um, I really, really liked the Thornburn's terracotta. It's so rich in flavor, deep, deep pumpkin-colored flesh, um, and just a really beautiful. It didn't produce a ton for me, um, but it was one of the ones I started later, so it was producing through really, really hot weather. It might do better in other conditions, but I will definitely grow the Thornburn's terracotta again. Now this is interesting, accordion orange. Again, I love the look of these. Um, Gina Lee, not familiar with that, but it looks like a really easy processor. And here we've got kind of like the greens and whites. There's Wagner's blue green, and we just met Mr. Wagner over there. That's kind of cool. Cream sausage. Um, looks like a pretty nice tomato. This is cool. I just show you here. I've not seen this before. This is really, really pretty. It's like a deep green, but kind of got that orangey look to it. Um, I'm taking a picture of that. I would like to grow this tomato. I bet this tastes really good. I like the flavor of tomatoes that kind of look like this. I did one called um, Malachite Box. It wasn't as bright as like a traditional green in flavor, but it was really, uh, it had it had more depth to it, and I think this probably would have the same thing. I'm really eager to try that. Here's the Great White, the Green Giant, Hartman's Yellow Gooseberry, Lucky Tiger. I've heard really good things about the flavor of the Lucky Tiger, and I I don't think I grew that this year. Grandma Oliver's Green. Now that's interesting. That is a really bright green tomato, but it, whenever you touch it, it's definitely got some give to it. It's definitely ripe. Um, that's in, oh look, they've got it cross-sectioned here. Wow, that's the half of this. And that's ripe. Man, that's cool. Emerald Apple. That reminds me of that other one over there. That's really pretty. And Aunt Ruby's German Green. I do like Aunt Ruby. Oh, here's the stripey table. Vintage wine. I grew this this year, but had a really hard time with any sort of uniformity. Like, they were all different sizes. Cherokee Purple, one of old favorites. Get Stuffed, also grew this one. I mean, it is a looker. Is that not just a beautiful fruit? Look at the striping on that. They're a little weird. They definitely have very thin walls and a lot of gel. Very similar to a bell pepper like shape inside. The Berkeley tie-dye green. That's beautiful. Spike. Pink boar. There's Brad's atomic grape. Black beauty. A lot of these are Brad's tomatoes. 
um, Wild Boar Farms. The Dark Galaxy. Look at that. Isn't that neat? True Black Brandywine. Solar Flare. Dragon's Eye. Tigerette. Okay. Oh, man. So this pink jazz, I saw this the other day. This is not the big one. They had one that was bigger than this over here. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know if it got too yucky and they had to toss it or somebody dropped it or something. But like, look how massive this pink jazz is. There was one that was larger than this. It was very well, it could have very well been one of the largest tomatoes I've ever seen in my life. It had to have been over three pounds. Um, so yeah, pink jazz made my list for next year. Here's green zebra, which was like the original stripy tomato. This is where a lot of Brad's tomatoes came from, breeding out of green zebra, which is kind of cool. Here's cosmic eclipse and pink Berkeley tie-dye. I like this table. Just got one table here of tomatillos. A few different kinds here. I just, I can't even pretend to know much about tomatillos because I've just failed so miserably at growing them. And this is a really, really cool table with all the different kinds of corns, Peruvian corn varieties. Now they're not labeled, unfortunately, so I can't really tell you what's what here, but I just wanted to give you a look at some of these because they're so beautiful. Look at this. Is that not amazing? They look like beads. I don't have nearly as much experience growing things like watermelons and winter squashes. I just haven't had as much experience with them. I've grown lots of peppers and tomatoes. Uh, so I can't give quite as much input on these, but I want to show them to you because it is absolutely amazing to see all the different varieties that are just laid out on these tables. I also noticed this morning that uh, Jer was going around and cutting the melons open. So some of these we can actually see the flesh of them. They waited obviously into the last day to do that because they would not have lasted the entirety of the expo cut open. Um, but it's kind of neat to be able to see what they look like even though I can't, you know, attest much to the flavor. There's the Bozeman Uncle Jim's yellow meat. This is really neat looking. Gift of the Sun yellow. But the flesh is very much red. The Rio Grande Red Seeded. Okay, now this one yesterday, they were sampling out. We had like a YouTube event in the morning. And this was really, really delicious. And the seeds are red. So I was wondering about it. This is really cool. I would really like to try growing this. Golden Bay Yellow Ball. Akana. Now this is neat. The Bidwell Casaba. And I, I don't know what's going on here. If these are like rotten spots or what. If this is just like an older melon. But... This one is, I, it's so fragrant that I can just smell it standing here. Rucha smelling, that's pretty. Uh, mellow frog to pick. Like this. I'm such a seed saver, I just want to be like, yoink! Kazaka. Okay, now this smells so stinking good. Oh my goodness. Wow, this smells so fragrant. Siberian Lights. Ethiopian. Golden Honeymoon. That's neat. I think this is what I got. Um, our friends Pure Hearts Homestead grew some golden like honeydew type melons and brought them and they looked just like this. I wonder if this was the variety they grew. It was very delicious. The Madu Raws. Now I've grown this, but none of them have developed yet. This is one of my melons I still have growing at home. How cool is this guy? Wow, that's neat looking. Here's the flesh. Let's go around to the other side. Here are some bitter melons, which are just really cool looking. Reminds me a lot of that snake board we cut open the other day. Manzano Sandia. Cooler back. That's neat. That's a neat melon. Mayo. Marmony marble. Look at that. That's pretty. Albert honey. Nambe. I guess this is that one. And here are the Leilana sweet golds. Perlin. Oh, that's interesting. It's really soft. It's almost like 
like a very matte skin. I don't know how to describe it. It's not quite fuzzy, that's not the right word, but you know how peach fuzz sometimes has that just velvety feel? It's kind of got a weird feel to it. Mellow de la Zena. Look at that. Wow. That is really striking. Ah, Armenian yard long. So I grow these and use them like cucumbers. Technically, they are a melon. Um, but yeah, I just harvest them really young and pickle them like cucumbers. That's cool. Ribbed. That's neat. Oh, look at the webbing on this guy. It's really neat. Royal Golden. Wilson Sweet. I've got Wilson Family. Japanese Cream Flesh. This is another one that we were tasting the other day. Very, very mild, but really good. That red seed one, man, that was, that was where it was at. Black Seeded Ice Cream. Just the name of this makes me want to grow it and eat it. Black Tail Mountain. Oh, a Rhode Island Red Melon. So you could have melons and hens to match. I've heard good things about the Georgia Rattlesnake. That's one that's pretty well known. How sweet. The moon and stars. Is this not just such a beautiful melon? I love that. And it comes in a red flesh and a yellow flesh. Carolina cross. Wow, that's a big melon right there. Peacock. Dixie queen. Sugar baby. Sugar baby's gotten pretty popular in recent years as an icebox melon because it fits in the fridge. Long fruit. Oh, wow, look at this one. Gold and gold hybrid. Wow. Isn't that neat? I just want to eat them. Super daisy yellow. That's pretty. Refined sugar. Oh, that is so smooth. Now these I bet would do well on a trellis right here. These Thai babies. I mean, even at this size, you could support it and it would be fine. It's kind of neat to note. I always like to find new things I can grow on my trellises. I think you could probably even grow some of these like icebox size melons if you made sure to give them enough support, but I don't know if the trellis could really support it overall. That's a really interesting looking melon. The Curtis Shoal White Flesh. White Wonder. Okay, so down here is where the white ones are. Silver Yamato. I've seen this before. Wow, look at this. That's really neat. And now a quick run through the squash, which I know very little about. Um, I haven't successfully grown a lot of winter squash in my life because I do struggle with squash bugs so much, but um, I can absolutely appreciate the diversity and the beauty of this fruit, and I really wish that I could grow it better. So let's go take a look uh, at the squash. Some of these, these squash are massive. Like, I don't think that I could lift some of these. They're so big. And, and just so crazy diverse. I wish you could all be here and see this. And there are tables and tables of squash. And no t no, none of them are the same. Now a lot of these, like, you see like the tromba, um, Ford Hook Zucchini, okay? So many of you probably grew zucchini in your, your garden this year. And as many of you know, if you miss a zucchini for like a day, you end up with baby-sized zucchini, right? Just like this. But what happens with squash is that if you leave it long enough, it gets um, a really, really thick, hard skin. And like this zucchini has done this now. Had this been harvested when it was like six inches long, you could have diced it up and eaten it, you know, made a zucchini boat or some zoodles, just how you would eat a summer squash. And now it's, it's hard. Now some of them don't cure as well for winter storage, but when we think of like winter squashes, there are some we grow more specifically for the purpose of winter storage, like butternut and acorn and, and different things like that. Uh, but any of these squashes could have been harvested really young and, uh, and eaten like summer squash, even like the butternuts and all of that stuff. But it, you know, it's good to read up on these things so we really learn what the best use of them are. For instance, um, 
here, I'm gonna reach over the table. Remember that I grew what I called custard squash. It's very similar to a patty pan, harvested about this big, yellow, really good nutty, creamy flavor for a summer squash. Now this is a custard squash that was allowed to get really big. The thing is, is uh, some squashes they say, and I don't know this for sure because I've never tried to eat one at this size, but um, especially these that don't have as much meat, that they're really best used for decoration at this point. Um, or maybe baking and different things like that. But for the most part, whenever people let some of these really develop these hard, warty skins, at that point they become decor more than they are food. So this is the same kind that I was harvesting really young. This was just allowed to continue to grow to maturity. So there are some squashes like Camo Camo. I, uh, this is one that I have seen advertised as good to use like a winter squash like an acorn type variety but also that you can harvest this one young and eat it like a summer squash and it's kind of like a multi-purpose that they say is good for both reasons um, and honestly I don't know enough about squash to tell you off the top of my head which ones are great as summer squash and some of these I've never even heard of before now the Desi I grew this this year um, and I, we just harvested those young and ate them uh, like summer squash and they were delicious. I really liked the Desi squash. Some of these are just so fascinating. Butternut variety. Check this out. Butter bush. That's so interesting. So curious. Bushel basket. That's very similar to like a butternut style. Look how huge these are. Sweet dumpling. I've grown these before, uh, and these these you you're supposed to cure and eat like a you know like a winter squash. Palm door. These are so wild. The whole turban style that are just they're just so funky looking. Flora bell, obviously very similar to the rampicante that I grew on my trellises this year, and these have been allowed to harden. Uh, here we got some loofahs. Zucca gourd. Look at this guy. That's huge. It's beautiful. African kettle. Wow, look how lovely that is. So what do you guys think? Do you love the warty squashes? Do you think these are so fascinating or are they, are they yucky to you? I think some people are like, ew, I can't handle that. I, I love it. I am a textural person and I could just sit here and pet these squashes like, I've already walked through here multiple times and touched all of them. Ooh, the, the Kushaw, now this is supposed to be a really good squash. And that's a tricolor. Look how beautiful that is. So neat. Now I've known of them growing more that shape. I haven't seen them be as round, so I'm not sure what's going on there. This is beautiful. Okay, so this is one I've grown as a summer variety. And I've, I, you know, you harvest it really young. And it's got these stripes. I have not seen it get this big. I never let mine go that long, but look at that. That's wild. That's a zucchini type. Caserta is another I've grown for summer squash. And here's, I just grabbed that one over the table, those Gilbert English or custard squash. Uh, the Rugosa Frulana. Now this one I've grown as a summer squash, like a warty thing, and it just, you pick it young like a crookneck. Of course that it's, but here it is, fully mature. And that's so funky, I love it. Oh, and the Pattison, okay, so these are patty pans. Obviously large and hard skinned, but these are fantastic as summer squash. Really good flavor, and I've had really good luck with these. Very resistant. And I've done the golden or the Patterson striped, and then also the golden Mabry. Mabry. This is so much squash. Oh, sweet Maya's bringing me a drink. Just like at home. <laughs> okay. 
So here's a golden crookneck, really similar to the other that many of you are probably familiar with growing this. This is a really popular uh, squash to grow for a summer squash. So the curry. There's a golden zucchini. There's the yellow scallop patty pan. Okay, so this squash, I'm familiar with the seeds of this one. I have the seed packet. This has the coolest looking seed. It's really big and it looks like pillowy, like it looks stuffed almost. It's very interesting. I'm gonna go through here and kinda hit some high points. Wow, look at this. Ah, this squash has gotta be like, I mean, it's probably 30 pounds at least. It's massive. Look at this, the crown of thorns. Is that so wild? Small spoon. Oh, I like this guy. Ah, this one is really cool. Hand play size lucky gourd. That's neat. Wow, Big Mac. It's huge. I could not pick this up. That's so big. Look at this tangle of Serpente de Sicilia, aka Cacuza Gourd. It's just like a tangle of squash. A long neck butternut. That's neat. Ah, so the cheese uh, machata squash. This is on my to grow list. If I can ever successfully grow a squash, I want to grow that one. Here's the Rampicante, which I grew on my trellises this year. And look at this Lakota, isn't that pretty? Okay, so here's the crown of thorns. This is also called that. I don't know if this is just harvested younger. I don't know, this has a really hard skin, so this must be just kind of a different variation of that. It reminds me a lot of a patty pan, though. Um, I'm sure you could eat that like a summer squash. It's really neat looking. This is such a cool thing. I love getting to walk through here to meet all the people and to meet the vegetables and getting to see the different fruits in person. I mean, it just really gives you an idea of what you want to grow. So I hope this helps you guys. I hope you enjoyed walking around with me and checking out all these different things. Um, I wish that you could all get to experience this in person, but since that's not possible, um, my hope is to be able to share it with you in a way that you felt like you got to experience at least a big part of it. So thank you again for hanging out with me and I bless you. Until next time.